Before I did this video, I saw a review by a gentleman that said, I'd like to see a very simple little videotape that I can show my wife and teach her how to use the Pro 900. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. And as I got into producing this uh, streaming video, I realized that and I decided to break it into two parts. In the second part, I'm gonna first cover how to fit the collar on your dog. I'm gonna cover how to determine the working level for your dog and it's different for every single dog. I'm gonna talk about the ramp feature. I'm gonna talk about the instant stimulation feature. I'm gonna talk about the light. I'm gonna explain how to program them. I'm gonna explain how to lock your collar so you would ha always have it in the same mode. Uh, I'm gonna explain how to program the lost transmitter feature. I'm gonna explain how to program your collar by using your computer. In the first video, I'm gonna explain how to change the programming by yourself just using the transmitter. You can also program it using your computer. It comes with a USB stick that has the program, the educator program on it. So I'll explain that. And then finally, you have to use the computer programming to change the types of tone and the types of vibration that come with this collar. So that's all gonna be in the second streaming video. So I'm gonna take a second here to talk about how to fit, if you're new to remote collar training, how to fit the collar on your dog. Assuming you have the right contact points, and I bred German Shepherds for 35 years for police service work, competition, obedience, uh, biting dog sports. It's important to have the right contact points for your dog. If you have a long-haired dog, put the longer contact points on there. But how you put it on your dog is extremely important. And people that are new to dog training and new to use, using uh, these collars, 99% of the time they don't put them on correctly. They put them on too loose, so they're just, they think it's on tight enough and it's just hanging down like that. Well, I can tell you, that, you can look at this right there. There's not a lot of room here, but you know what? Neither one of these contact points are on my neck. But if you look here on the side, I'm telling you, it's tight. Contact points aren't even touching me. So the way you've got to do it is you put the collar right up underneath the jaw of your dog and you have the strap come right behind the ears and you pull it on tight. I mean, it's tight. Now that I can feel the prongs, but if you feel a remote collar that's on a dog correctly you, and you're not familiar with this, you're gonna think, holy geez, that's way too tight. Try it on yourself though. I mean, you just saw me when I thought the average person would think, okay, that's pretty tight. You know what? I'm not gonna get any stimulation. Where it is right now, I got a full finger in between the end of one of those probes. Before, I had two fingers. That's on pretty tight there. Neither one of those probes are touching my neck. If you are training with a remote collar or in, I call them invisible leashes, it's gotta work. And the only way it's gonna work is if you put this collar on correctly and if you keep your units charged. So learn how to put it on tight. Learn, it's gotta be tight. So it's, I'm not choking there, but both of them are touching me. And if you'd walk up and pull on this and you'd say, wow, that's really tight. Well, you know what? Put it on yourself. It's not that tight. Now I will say this, one of the things, and I forgot, I forgot when we figured this out, 10 years ago, I don't know, a long time ago, we figured out that we could take two transmitters and put it on one collar and we didn't have to put the collar on as tight as we would if we just had one transmitter on. What we found out was we could put a collar on and it could be looser 
and at least depending upon which way the dog was leaning, one set of those contact points would be touching the dog's neck. A lot of people that don't understand dog training at all think, holy geez, you're doing that? So you can shock the snot out of that dog twice as hard as you would normally. Those people are misguided. That's the word I was looking for. I had a few other words too. But there's a lot to be said about having two transmitters on the same collar. You just don't have to have it on tight. They can lean one way and it'll get it this way. They can lean the other way and it gets this way. We sell a lot of a lot of collars where customers order two of these and they pair them so they're both getting it. And one last thing, if you're new to the collar business or to the collar training and your dog, your dog's neck is like this, there's no reason to have the rest of that there. Just cut it off. Figure out where it is on your dog Go past your little, little uh, latches there, go past there, and then cut that much of it off. It doesn't make sense to have it all flapping around like that. Now we're gonna talk about how to set different levels. If you're new to dog training, you have to figure out what the working level is of your dog. That means you put the collar on, and we want to know at what level a dog starts to feel something from the transmitter. So we'll put the collar on and let the dog be free in the room and we'll stimulate them at level one and look and see if there's any reaction. And we'll move it up to level two, we'll move it up to level three. And what we look for is for sure we don't want a dog that has a verbal uh, yelp or jump. We're looking for the moment when that dog feels something, and it's different with every dog. Some dogs will kind of, their eye will twitch a little bit, their head will just look around like, what, what was that? Or they'll, they'll look at the ground like, what was that? Did I just step on something? We don't, we prefer not to have a startle response where the dog goes, ah! I did that pretty good. Anyway, I would say that if you get a startle response, uh, most of the time, you went too high. There's going to be an occasional dog that's a little touchy that, that may yelp at nothing, but you're looking at the least amount of stimulation to be kind of like tapping the dog on the shoulder saying, hey, pay attention to me. Hey, pay attention to me. Quit looking at over there. Come on, pay attention. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for punishment in the dog from my standpoint. My standpoint is the purpose, and I say it a million times, the purpose of a correction is not to punish a dog. The purpose of a correction is to get a behavior change. We want a behavior change in the dog. We want him to stop focusing on this other dog, uh, focusing on a tennis ball when we are calling him to us, you know, and the level of corrections are going to increase based on how strong the distraction is that our dog goes, is faced with. For example, if you have a dog that's dog aggressive and this dog is seeing a dog that's a half a block down the street and he's starting to focus on him, obviously you're not gonna get a behavior change by, hey, don't look at that dog. You're gonna have to go higher than that. So no one can tell you what level you should start your dog at. You have to figure out what level the dog needs to be at based on the level of distraction that's in front of your dog. So you just determine where your dog's beginning level is. Maybe the dog's level is, you know, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 10, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna talk about the ramp feature. Basically, the first thing you gotta do is you've gotta program one button for the ramp and another button for the ramp boost. So first I'm gonna get you to it. Hit the program button, tell the PA shows. Hit the S3 until it goes around the circle 
C, C plus, there it is. The R for ramp, I'm gonna lock that in by pushing the program button. S3 is now programmed to the R. Now I'm gonna program the S4, the red button, to the ramp boost. Put it in the program mode, push it until I see PA, the outer, uh, the outer ring is flashing. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, I'll show you what I want. I push S4 until it comes around to the R plus, R boost. M, M boost, C for continuous, C plus continuous boost. There's R, R plus is ramp boost and I'm gonna lock that in place now by pushing the program. So now we have S3, the top button for ramp, S4 for R plus, ramp boost. Now let's talk about how it works. Let's say that we have determined that my dog has a working level of 20. So I'm gonna turn the dial and get it on 20. So there, I got the dial to 20. When I touch the ramp, it's going to take one second to go from zero to 20, because 20 is what I have as a working level, it's what I have on the dial. So I push it, it goes from zero to 20 in one second. What's the boost? The boost is gonna depend upon what you programmed your boost to be for this unit. Remember, we had set the boost earlier to whatever your dog needs. Once you determine a boost level, be it coming from the factory set at five, if you feel your dog or you wanna have a boost of 10, you program the boost to 10 or to 20. Once you set a boost level for a transmitter, it's the same boost for momentary, it's the same boost for continuous, and it's the same boost for ramp. So, if I have a working level of 20 for my dog, and I've got it dialed to 20, and I hit boost, ramp boost, it's gonna take two seconds to go from zero to the 20 plus the boost. So it's gonna go two seconds from zero to 40. So I hold it down and it goes two seconds and it gets up to 40 because, how did I get 20 again? 20 is the working level of my dog and the boost level that I had pre-programmed was 20. So 20 and 20, it goes to 40 in two seconds. I'm gonna say it again. I see no purpose for the ramp setting. If you use a remote caller, timing is critical. So if you use a ramp, your timing is off by a second. If you use the ramp plus, timing is off by two seconds. It makes no sense in the world to use a ramp setting. I'm not sure why Greg has that on there because as far as I'm concerned, it's bad dog training. Don't use it, that's all I gotta say. Uh, programming a button to the instantaneous mode. Uh, we start by turning your dial. It has to be on zero, zero to make this program mode. I'm gonna program S3, the one in the front, to instantaneous. So the first thing I do, make sure that my dial says zero, zero, there's no stimulation called for. I'm gonna put it in the program mode. So what do I do? I push the P on the side, hold it down until I get a PA showing. showing. Then I'm gonna push the S3, because that's, that's the button I wanna program, until I see that it's on the I. So there's the I. I've got it on I. It says S3, it looks like 53, but it's S3. I'm gonna lock it in by pushing the program button again. So I just programmed S3 to be the instantaneous. In this segment, I'm gonna talk about how the instant um, feature works 
on the Educator Pro 900 because it's different. If you're going to use or program one of the buttons to be the instant button, you have to start with the stimulation level at zero, zero. If you have your stimulation level set to two, it's not going to work. The way the instant works is you set it to zero, zero. If I have programmed one of the buttons, and for this I'll say the S4 or the red button. If I program the red button to be the instant feature, I push it when it's zero, zero, and that starts a 45 second clock. So it'll sit there and not do anything for 45 seconds or until I turn the dial and start to do stimulation. And as I do stimulation up, down, up, down, it will stimulate for 45 seconds and then it'll turn itself off. If you want to turn it off before the 45 seconds, there's two things you can do. You can push the button again that you have programmed, that stops it. Or you can rotate the button back to zero. That stops the, the stimulation, but it starts the 45 second clock going again. You got me? So we started at zero, zero for 45 seconds. I rotate the dial up, that starts a different 45 second clock. So you can go up and down, up and down, up and down, back to zero, zero. 45 second clock starts again. So you get 45 seconds to do whatever you want and then start rotating it again. Up, another 45 second clock goes. When you're all done, you can either go back to zero, zero, wait 45, start it again, or in the end, to turn the whole thing off, you push your programmed button and that gets you out of the instant mode. But again, this is not a feature that a new dog trainer should use because you have too many things going on in your mind at one time to remember that once you start that instant continuation, that dog's gonna get stimulated for 45 seconds if you don't turn it off. So that's the way it works. It's an important thing for anybody that owns a pro educator and wants to use the instant feature to know and understand completely. So I'm gonna talk about the light feature here. Uh, there's a caveat that goes along with the light feature and that is you have a limited amount of battery time in your transmitter, so use your light sparingly. It's not a flashlight to be left on all the time. You'll find that out. And the worst part about it is if you're out there and your dog is off leash and you need the remote to do your recalls and you've used all your battery power on a light, you have a dog with no invisible leash. So with that said, I'll explain how to do it. First of all, obviously, both your transmitter uh, and your receiver need to be turned on. Put your transmitter in the program mode until you see PA or PR, whichever way you want to read it. Then push your on and off button two times. Just tap it on to it's on. Now push one of the S1 through the S4 buttons. Any one will work. I'll push S1. That turns the light on to the blinking mode. You can see it blink. If I push S1 another time, it'll make it go on continuous, so it's on all the time. If you want to turn it off, you push the S1 button one more time, and the light goes off. You can get out of the light mode by simply pushing the P button one more time. Now, if I press S1, I just get the stimulation, whatever it was programmed for before. So I'm going to do it one more time just to repeat myself. Push the program button until you see PA or PR. Once it's flashing, push your on and off button twice. Once, twice. Now it's in the light programming mode. Push S1 or S2 or S3 or S4. It makes no difference. Push it one time. Now your light is on and it's blinking. 
Push it one more time and it's going to stay on. I hope. <laughs> it does. Push it one more time and it's going to go off. Push the P button. You're out of the mode. Now your S1 flips back to whatever you had it programmed to before. So again, use it sparingly. If your dog is running around in a big park off leash and you're not 100% sure where he is, you know, go ahead. It doesn't take that long to turn it to PA, on off twice. There he is. I see where he is. So I turn it off. Press the P1 or the program button once. I'm out of it. So you can do it rather quickly, but again, remember, you don't have a lot of battery program here. Some people are worried that they are going to accidentally roll that thing up to 50 on a dog that only needs a 10 working level. Those people can lock this transmitter at 10 and it's not that hard to do. So we're gonna do that. First thing I'm gonna do is get it to 10. Then I'm gonna get it in the programming mode over here. Keep in mind, when you lock, when you lock your system at a 10, it's locked at a 10 for momentary and it's locked at a 10 for continuous. So you have to program one of the buttons that's momentary or one of the buttons that's continuous to 10 and then lock it in. You do that by pushing the program button, wait till it gets to the PA and the outer ring is flashing saying, what do you want, what do you want? And then you say, I'll show you what I want and I'm gonna push it until I get it to, to either a C or an M, continuous or momentary and the one for the one dog is the tell here. If the one is solid, then it's locked. If the one is blinking, like it's blinking now, but I want to lock it at 10, I'm going to hold the, the button down until the blinking one doesn't blink anymore. That means I got it locked. And then I program that in. Now my one does not blink because I just locked it at 10. So I can turn the collar up to 69 and if I push the momentary or the continuous button, which is locked at 10, it's only gonna stimulate at level 10. So you don't accidentally rotate it and stimulate your dog higher than what you wanna have it stimulated. Frankly, I personally would not lock my collar in because I like to have the option of changing the stimulation levels. If I have a dog that I need, I feel I need to train with a remote collar for some reason, I don't want it locked. But it's a feature that's there for those people that do want to have it locked. So there's only one other thing that I should add to this and that is that we've locked, uh, we've locked S1 here at 10, the working level on a dog. Keep in mind that if you have preset a boost to whatever, let's say you preset your boost to 10 and you have the S2 programmed to continue as boost, you can have it locked where S1 is going to give you a 10, doesn't matter what you show on your dial, you push it and it's going to go sh and it's going to show 10 and if you've programmed S2 to be your continuous boost at 10 and you push S2 it's going to take your 10 boost and add it to the 10 that you've locked it at and your, your boost will then be 20. But it's going to be locked at 20. So it won't matter. Once this unit is locked in at your working level, your continuous and your momentary will be at 10. And if you pre-programmed your boost to be 10 and your S2 is continuous boost, you hit that the dog's going to get 2, or 20, I'm sorry. And if you've pre-programmed your S4 to be momentary boost, it's going to get a boost of 20. You're locked in 10 plus your boost. Okay, we'll move on. You also have the opportunity 
to have a loss transmitter signal on here. What the loss transmitter signal simply means is if you haven't touched this thing in six hours, it'll start to beep. So hopefully, if you use the charging system that I use and that Cindy uses and that we recommend, which means it's either on the dog or it's plugged in at your feeding station or in your change room or your training room, wherever, you'll never have to use it. But if you do, it's a good feature to have. So after six hours, if it hasn't been used, it'll beep for you. Of course, uh, there's another side to that too. That means if uh, you're out in your field, in your training field someplace, and you lose this baby, uh, you gotta wait for six hours to come back and then wander around and have a lot better ears than I have to hear this beeping. Uh, bring, a, a, bring a young kid with you because their ears are way better than ours and they'll probably, could bring your dog with you too. I did that once when I was tracking some guys on the Sheriff's Department, I dropped my radio. It was a $700 radio in a cornfield and I thought it was a brand new radio too. And I had no idea because I'd been going for miles. And I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around and go back the way I came. Thank God. My dog's running around on a loose leash in grass that's this tall. Sticks his head down, picks that radio up. I wanted to kiss him right on the nose right then and there. So now we're going to talk about how to program our transmitter for the lost transmitter mode. How do you do it? Simple. Just like everything else, uh, push your program button until you get PA. It's all flashing. What do I do? What do I do? Push the on and off three times. One, two, three. Then it's off. Now that's interesting because I see over here a transmitter. There's a little transmitter button a picture of a transmitter with some stuff around it. So, to turn it on, I push one of the L1, uh, S1 buttons. And I hear the little song, and it's on. So now, I see the transmitter on the right-hand side, and the on there. Now here's the caveat to the whole thing. You have to know when you're going to lose your transmitter to have this thing work. So, <laughs> I think everybody knows when they're going to lose their car keys. Everybody's got to know when they're going to lose their transmitter so you can program it to let you know that, hey, you lost me and I'm over here. But that's Greg for you. Engineers design stuff just because they like to design. But anyway, that's how you do it. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to use the little USB uh, to program your receiver. Personally, I think it's easier now that I understand how to program this, and I hope you feel the same way, that it's easier to program 90% of the things that you want to program by just using uh, the receiver and the buttons. But there are some things there are some features that cannot be programmed unless you use the USB. And those are your tone settings. It comes pre-programmed with one tone level. It comes pre-programmed with one vibration level, but there's different levels. And those can only be changed by using the USB in your computer. So if that's important to you, then you're going to have to use the USB. And basically, all you do is plug it in to the slot on your computer, and then you take your, com your cords, your USB cord, and you plug it into the USB setting on your computer. like that, and you plug it in on your other, and now we're going to go ahead and talk about how this all works. When you open up the computer program, this is what you're going to see when you start. You're going to have the default settings if you do not have your transmitter connected. 
If you have your transmitter connected to your computer, which I don't, this little button here would be highlighted. And if I had changed any of the programming on my transmitter, it would be reflected here. But this is set for the default. So if you ever want to set your transmitter back to the default, you just click the default button. That's exactly what everything is set at. The default for the boost is 5. Default for the maximum level is 100. The vibration is set at the TSH. I'll talk about that in a minute. Tone is medium. The instant mode is normal. So now, let's say we go and we change some of these. In the computer program, when we're done, all we have to do is go over here and hit save. And that's going to change and save everything that we've made changes to here. It'll change it and save it to your transmitter. So that's important to know in the beginning. Now, let's back up and look at some of the things that you can do here. If you want to change your boost with the computer program, you can do it right here. Pretty simple. I'm not going to spend any time talking. Default boost is, uh, is 10. If you would want to lower your maximum level, you can. The most you can get out of it is 100. When it comes to the vibration and the tone, the only way that you can change, reprogram your transmitter to a different vibration or a different tone, and again, that's the vibration default is the S1, this button on the side, the default from the factory tone is the S2, this button on the side. And again, if you want to change any of them to whatever you want, it's as simple as that. But I'm going to put it back to tone. So there's the default. You come over here. Well, let's talk about vibration. Come over here to the vibration settings. And you've got another a number of options here. You've got high, medium, and low. What this means is the vibration is a steady, high level of vibration. And I'm not going to try and describe what that is you'll have to just program your own transmitter and feel it and see if you can what you think about it the difference is the ts high is more of they call it a tamping sensation it's like a pulse whereas this is a steady vibration it sounds like zzz. this level in a vibration would be zzz, 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 zzz. and this medium and low are just different speed settings for the t -t 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 -t. this is low now this is interesting the ta means a vibration with a working level of stimulation so if you have your dial set to 20 and you program your button to be you program your tone button to be ta they're going to get a vibration and a working level of stimulation at the same time and it's a similar thing with the tone over here you have high medium low that's loud medium not so loud PA is a similar thing it means you have a tone along with a working level of tone and the working level is going to be what you show on your dial at the time that you're using it. So you can set your PA and your tone here when you hit it is going to be a tone and a stimulation at the same time. So I'll set mine to high. The instant mode is also a little different. Here you have your normal instant mode that we talked about in the programming when you program using your transmitter. I'm not going to repeat that here. The difference for the limited or the limit is you get an instant stimulation with a maximum level of 40. Now, maybe Greg would have been better advised to use for the PETA folks out there and rather than an instant shock might have been a better idea to use instant stimulation, but water over the dam, what can I say? So, 
that's what we have. Now, I'll leave that just one more time, though. The, the limited means that you have an instant stimulation with a maximum level of 40. It means instantly you get stimulation. You can rotate the dial all the way up, and the most you're going to get is 40 levels out of it. So for those people that do use the instant stimulation, and I believe I already mentioned, I recommend that only for professional dog trainers or until you really get some training and how to train with that. I'm not going to talk about it here. So with that said, you can come over here and change any one of the four programmable buttons, one, two, three, four, to anything you want. So you've got your drop down here. Your only option on this one is momentary boost, M+. Plus. There is no M option, and that's because the S3 button, this one, is already programmed to M, so you're only going to be able to, you can't have two buttons programmed to M or momentary. You could program it to continuous, continuous boost. <laughs> Greg, knock off that shock stuff. <laughs> it's a little goofy. Should have said continuous boost stimulation. Ramp, shock. No, Greg. Ramp, stimulation. Ramp, boost, stimulation. Instant, vibration, tone. You can actually set it to nothing if you want. In this case here, I might probably set it to momentary, momentary boost. If you want to come over here, you could set this to continuous, continuous boost. There you go. You got it right there. And then if we had our collar plugged in, you go over here to hit save right here. And everything that we've made here is then going to save to our transmitter. So it's a pretty interesting thing, but I'm going to say this one more time. I'm not a network administrator. Getting this program to work could be impossible for you because it depends on the security system that you have on the computer you're going to plug this into. Now, I'm using this on an Apple. I don't have the current, I believe the current, at this point in time, the current operating system is level 10. I never installed that. So I was able to open this computer program, but as I understand it, it can't open on the current system. So you may have to go to the Microsoft Windows uh, computer to, to program it. Or, you know, Windows is so goofy, they just did their upgrades and they upgraded at night without asking. And Windows 10 is a terrible, terrible product. And you might not be able to even do it there. So all I'm saying is that this is an interesting program. It's a quick way to program a lot of features if you can get it to work on a program, on a computer. But if you can't, don't call me. Call Greg down at uh, Educator, and he'll have to figure out what he's going to do it. But the operating systems change so often, it's almost an impossible thing to do. It's a great idea, but still... Uh, a hard thing to keep organized. So with that said, I'm going to close out of this. That's how, you, that's how you use your computer and the USB cable to program your transmitter. It's as simple as that. And again, personally, I'd, pr I'd prefer to do most of the programming myself because it's so simple to do yourself once you understand this. But like I said, if you want different levels of vibration, different levels of tone, you're going to have to learn how to run the USB on your computer. If you're new to remote collar dog training, I recommend that you learn how to train with a remote collar correctly. Learberg has done a number of DVDs and streams and courses on remote collar training. I tell people that the remote collar is the greatest tool that's ever been invented for dog training when it's used with low level stimulation. It's also the most abused tool that's ever been invented for dog training. That's why you see all these animal rights people out there badmouthing the use 
of a remote collar when, if they had learned how to train with it correctly and had done low level stimulation, they would very quickly learn that the vast majority of the times that a good dog trainer uses a remote collar is at low levels, levels that a human can't even feel. The use of a remote collar, when it's done correctly, is like tapping your dog on the shoulder and saying, hey, come on, pay attention to me. Just do what I want you to do. It doesn't have to be shock the dog. It's not hurt the dog. It's, hey, come on, pay attention to me. If you bought any brand of remote collar from Learberg, you got the free stream on uh, remote collar training for the pet owner. Uh, if you wanted it in a DVD, you got a 50% discount. So in closing, I want to talk about just a few accessories that we sell on the educator collars. I have them here and I'll just take a second to talk about them. We have a, a belt clip. Uh, don't get this confused with the metal clip. This actually has uh, a very, it's a good leather belt clip that goes on your, uh, on your belt that has a snap on it to hold your transmitter in it. I'm no fan of the metal belt clip, as I've already said, that comes with the unit. We also have a magnetic clip that's a pretty slick little unit. They use uh, earth magnets and they come with uh, a little screw that goes into the back of your unit like that and it's held on and you can put the other earth magnet in one of your pockets uh, on your jacket or your inside shirt pocket or wherever and it'll hold it to you just like that. These earth magnets are strong. You're not gonna, you're not gonna easily pull them off. So we sell a lot of these, people like them. We sell a stimulation reducer which is kind of a, not really the best name for it, but for lack of anything else, uh, I'll stick with the name. And that goes underneath the, uh, that goes underneath the contact points. And what it is, it's used from zero up to 20, and it levels out the stimulation levels between one and 20. So there's a definite difference to the dog the dogs can feel the difference between 14 and 15 and 16. So that's a good deal. We sell additional receivers for those uh, dog trainers that either want a second receiver. On the Pro 100, it comes with one receiver. It can handle up to three dogs or three receivers, so you have to buy an extra receiver. What other people will do is they'll take this receiver off this collar and they'll put it they'll put it on the second collar so that the dog has two receivers on one collar and I've already mentioned this in the streaming videos but I'm going to say it again because I don't want to be taken out of contest you don't have to have it as tight as you would have to have it if you had one collar on because as the dog gets exercise if he gets pulled one way or the other way, one collar will make contact with the next, the other collar will make contact with the neck. It's just a slick thing, we really like it. It's really, really good for biting dog sports or dogs that get a lot of physical exercise. As they get exercise, their muscles swell, so the dog can get stimulation. You might have your collar adjusted perfectly for one dog at the beginning of your training, but if, for example, police service dogs or or biting dog sports is they do biting, their neck muscles swell up just like lifting weights and then it can be pretty tight on there. One way around it is the last accessory I'll talk about is this collar from Educator that has a bungee strap on it. So you can adjust, you can adjust the collar to fit your dog one way or the other, you fit your dog with exercise for whatever you're doing, if the dog's neck starts to swell up from doing a lot of bite work, it expands like that. But the beauty is you adjust your collar one time, and I wouldn't recommend it doing it once. I'd use it for a while before I trim this excess off. But then from that point on, it's very simple to put this 
on a dog. You just walk up, it's a snap that quick. You know, some dogs are squirrels. If you try and, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. If you try and put a buckle collar on them, they don't want to sit still if they're not totally trained to it, haven't been conditioned to a collar going on and off. You know, if your dog hasn't been conditioned to a collar going on and off, use markers and learn how to train it. We have that, I think, as a free video on Liberty. But anyway, some dogs are squirreling all around, and people that, you know, have a little arthritis in their hands or a squirrely dog, that can be, this can be hard to do because the dog won't let them. This, you can put it together. It's a metal clasp. For a lot of training, I don't recommend these kind of clasps that are plastic because they can break. If you have a collar with a plastic clasp, I always recommend having a backup collar like our Learbird Dominant Dog Collar as a backup in case the, the, the plastic clasp should break, your dog won't be off leash. These metal ones, they don't break. So, well, there's always a caveat. Anything can break, brand new car can break. We just got a car last week, brought it home from the dealer. In our driveway, we pull in and there's a crack in the window and it hadn't been hit by a rock. Anything new can break. So that's what, that's what I have to say. We've got the leather belt patch, the earth magnet, which is really slick, stimulation control here, extra receiver, and the really cool metal snap lock clasps. That's what we got for accessories for the Pro 900 or the Educator Collars. <laughs>